E temos a senhora que no Typhoon. They said, you know, this typhoon is not like a natural typhoon, but this time it's a typhoon of a steel. A lot of people didn't want it, they didn't expect it, but it just came. really you know, sent a steel typhoon to Okinawa to destroy that island. When it all broke out, everything stopped. The Japanese government had a policy, you know, to uh, Japanize, you know, Okinawa. In those days, uh, you know, you go to school, you had to start speak Japanese because no Japanese understand Okinawan dialect. And that was a really bad taste. With the family growing and the depression, they decided for me and for my brother uh, to send, send to the United States. At the age of 12, I was really often. When I reached age 16, I quickly wrote a letter to my sister in Hawaii. Please call me back to Hawaii quick before Japanese send me to Manchuria. Who knew that a year, couple of years later, we're going to have a war with Japan? Over here, Hawaii, when the active bombing started, Nobody knew what it was all about. Everybody thought funny. There was nothing in the news about maneuver. And if you look at the direction of Pearl Harbor, you see the black stuff and the smoke coming out. My God, first I couldn't believe, and then felt sad. Why? I can't find the words to describe. After maybe another you know, one week, all Japanese put in the train. They ask her, are you a loyal American? Are you a loyal to emperor? Quite a few of them volunteered from a relocation camp like everybody else, they want to prove their loyalty to America, even though their parents are locked up. That's why, you know, I salute them, really. If I were in the same boot, I probably never would have volunteered. They didn't like the Japanese, you know, even in uniform. We were kind of mistrusted, you know, all the way. I'm only young punk, but came back to Hawaii on a two years before the war, eh? so they might suspect me, you know, like an uh, enemy alien. So I said, ah, that's the reason I volunteered. We are fighting with Japan, you know, our father's country. I have a family in Okinawa, and my brother's in the Japanese Army and Navy. But still, I want to be loyal to America.
eight months. We had intensive training in Japanese language. Every day uh, from morning to evening, I don't know, seven, eight hours, uh, translation, interrogation, and uh, interpreter training. But for us, uh, strong in Japanese, but uh, not very good in English. In the army, lights out at 10 o'clock. After 10, you cannot study in the barracks or classroom. So I used to go to the latrine. Every now and then, charge of car will patrol the campus. And whenever he sees me, he look at me and say, here again? <laughs> yes, sergeant. <laughs> so that's how I, I got managed, got through. I'm studying English, by the way. <laughs> First snow, I still remember. All of us from Hawaii ran out to the open area, play around in the snow roll in the snow and throw snowball at each other. After the Camp Savage, we had absolutely no contact because the very existence of our, our kind of unit was kept top secret. October 10, 44, they had a big air raid in Okinawa. And after that, took thousands of thousands of pictures. And what they saw frightened them. I got a call from our G2, Colonel Lindsay. As soon as we walked into the tent, there was a huge map of the southern half of Okinawa Island. I look at that, I froze because my instinct was, oh, next target, Okinawa. I had cold sweat, I tell you. After a careful look, it happens to be Naha. I explained to the intelligence officer a complete detail about Naha. Next, he asked me, where did your grandparents live, by the way? So I pointed general area in the map. And from there, I finger traced every relative's home, everything intact. Then he took out another picture, this time one hillside lined up with the traditional Okinawan burial tomb. So I look at it and I probably look at uh, intelligence officer. What's the big deal about this picture kind of face, I think? Who oh, I got schooling, you know. God damn it, look at carefully. We think the whole island is fortified. So I realizing the misconception this intelligence officers had about that hillside. I gave them crash course in Okinawan culture. So he tells me, Junior, you're going to help us from today on. Ever since I saw the picture, I used to dream about Okinawa every damn night. My uncles, aunties, cousins, my classmates even. I used to get nightmare. The day of our uh, invasion, actual landing, as the boat getting closer and closer to the beachhead, I recognized some of the land feature. Yeah? I tell you, I had tears on my eyes. You know, we uh, finally yeah. approached Okinawa, Silara, you know, American battleships. I look uh, in northern part because that's where I come from. It was uh, really peaceful. Central to Santa Paris, is uh, na naval sharing and, uh, you know, air bombardment uh, really, you know, scrape up. Why am I in the spot that gotta invade my ancestor homeland? I'm a GI. I had the obligation to perform because it's a war. I may have to kill somebody, kill somebody that I know, or they kill me. I had a very, very mixed feeling. All, all I can tell is I had the tears in my eye. But the ones transferred to the landing craft, my only thought was 
try to stay alive, you know, be alert, nothing else. Within the first two weeks of landing, I was called to interrogate. MP suspected the guy might be disguised Japanese soldiers. He was caught one night digging potato to feed the family. My first question, sensei, teacher, he looked at me, oh, Kimika, Yo, it's you. After that, we couldn't talk to each other, it was just a complete surprise. So I explained, this guy used to be my teacher at a great school. He's not a soldier, so please send him back to the camp where the wife and kids are retained. Uh, that kind of put me in a real funny kind of feeling, yeah? If I didn't run away from uh, Okinawa when I was 16 years old, I may be in the same spot. Somebody must be interrogating me. After less than three weeks, uh, I was told you know, I could go to Nago, maybe even look for my family. I was so surprised and I was glad, you know. Somehow uh, we searched the whole area, but we couldn't find. And my father found out. So he came down the mountain. They see us somewhere, you know, look like Okinawan, you know, uh, old, old man with a funny kind of shaggy hat and uh, old broken clothes. Before I did, again, my father started crying. I uh, embraced and encouraged him. They don't want to see uh, his own son, you know, uh, in uh, American uniform. And then uh, one of my brother, he was in the Japanese army. He was shot, you know, right. Just missed by an you know, inch from his uh, heart. We persuaded him, and finally, the whole family decided to come down. And we put them in a civilian compound. I didn't speak, talk about why I stayed in the army, and my brother, he never asked you know, anything. Because he didn't want to talk about it, I didn't want to talk about it. It went on maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 years. My biggest job was to try to convince all the natives are hiding in the caves come out. I'm just like one of you Okinawan people. So come out, come out. If you come out, we have a water, food ready. And if you're wounded or injured, our medical take care. Over and over, in standard Japanese first. And the latter way, turn around and same thing in Okinawan lingo. Over and over and over and over. The people died not only as a old casualty but also from uh, starvation. The Japanese soldiers in the scrounging of food for the natives. And I heard my heart uh, see those people in uh, suffering. I stayed another two and a half years, worked with the Okinawa civilian government, and became a liaison between civil government and military government. I asked my colonel to send me back to Okinawa because I may be useful over there yet. So the colonel looked at me and said, Junior, I'm sorry, I cannot send you back to Okinawa. Early January 46, I got discharged and I returned to Farrington High School. Uh, to say 
I want to be part of the history and now far distant from there. If your country asks for you, you're supposed to do whatever you will be asked to do. I guess it would be good to have our descendants to know what we went through. Not only what the estates went through, but my kids and grandchildren might want to know what the nieces did. When we volunteered for Okinawan team, we didn't want to become a hero or something. We just wanted to, to help our families. Because all initiates may be feel the same way, but you know, more you know, for Okinawan initiates. I think I did the you know, best I can do and I accomplished. i mm-hmm. 